What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video. In today's video we're going to talk about the top five pieces of advice that I have for new home brewers. I'm hoping to pass down some of my experience to those of you who are just starting out in this hobby. Some things that I've done or some things that I haven't done necessarily that I think would benefit you as a new home brewer and help you to make the fastest gains possible in terms of making experience and making better beer faster. Um, so that's really what I'm kind of boiling things down to in this video and so here we go. Start Starting out with number one. One of the things that I think home brewers should really focus on as they're starting out is brewing a smash beer, um, or brewing several smash beers, really. As you start to learn how to do what you're doing, uh, brewing a smash beer is really one of the best ways you can learn how individual ingredients work and really just fine tune your brewing process. Smash stands for single malt and single hop. It's a very, very simple beer recipe. So basically, you're just gonna pick a base malt. This can be Pilsner malt, could be pale malt, could even be Munich malt, to be honest. Um, and then you're gonna add only one variety of hop to the whole thing. You can honestly add as many ounces of this hop as you want to, and you can add them at whatever point during the brewing process you want to. First wear hop, boil additions, whirlpool additions, dry hops, whatever you want to do with it, all as long as it's the same exact hop. And then of course you only have one yeast for the whole thing. So it's a really simple recipe instruction, and what this allows you to do is to really fully understand the impacts of various base malts, various hop varieties, and also you can experiment with yeast in this way as well. You can make a smash beer out of pretty much most pale varieties of beer. They can be Pilsners, they can be Pale Ales, they can be IPAs. You can even make a Fest beer or a Hellas out of it if you wanted to uh, with 100% Munich malt. You could even make a Bach beer. There's actually a lot of beers that you can brew as a smash beer and they almost always are pretty good. Um, when you keep things simple, it helps keep that recipe under control. You're not adding variables in. And then it also means that your beer is probably going to show off any flaws a little bit more readily than if you had dumped a lot of hops in or dumped a lot of different malts into the whole thing. Uh, and really what that allows you to do is fine tune your process. If you have any issues that are causing problems for your beer based on your brewing process and some of the techniques that you're using, they will be highlighted in a smash beer a little bit more readily than otherwise. It's a great way to diagnose what's wrong with your system or what's wrong with your fermentation setup if you're consistently having problems. Um, and also, they tend to be pretty good beers in general when you get them down. They're very simple and cheap and easy to brew, and um, I have a multitude of smash recipes on my channel if you're curious about them. The second thing that I think people should focus on when they're starting out is taking notes. Um, get yourself a high quality brewing journal. Um, so a lot of people don't use brewing journals, don't take notes in general. They're working through either like the Brew Father app or, or just kind of winging it. Um, and that's a way to do it, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with that necessarily, but you're gonna learn a hell of a lot faster if you write down everything. Um, this is something I've mentioned many, many times before in the past. The best thing about a brewing journal is that you can go back and easily look at things in the past. In a way, my YouTube channel is my own brewing journal, although I do use one in general. Um, but I go back and I look at recipes, I look at videos I've done in the past, and I say, what went wrong, what went well, and why were those things happening the way they were? And if you write down every piece of your process and you write down everything that happens, whether it was planned to or not, um, and you compare that with your recipe, you look at your expected yield, you get your final yield, you figure out maybe my mash pH was a little bit lower because of this thing or that thing, how did that impact things? There's a ton of variables that go on during a brew day. Um, and one of the best ways to improve really is to analyze those variables and their impacts and then look for trends over your entire brewing history. And if you take notes, that's really just the best way to do that. This really helps you learn faster and improve faster and really just helps you be more deliberate about what you're doing in brewing. And then also at the same time, writing things down, like the act of just actually physically writing something down has the effect of making you remember it more. Um, it's just a neat little trick. It's like taking notes in class, really. You're just gonna be able to memorize things a lot easier and have stuff stick in your mind if you physically write it down. Uh, so that's just why I recommend that particular action. So the next piece of advice I have is regarding where to invest your money, really, uh, in terms of brewing. So you started out this hobby, maybe you started on basic equipment, you've, you've done a couple brews or you're just like getting comfortable with it and you're starting to realize that you really do enjoy this and it's consistently something that you're gonna continue to do. 
and you think maybe I want to put a little bit more money into my system and my equipment to make better beer. So I kind of have two thoughts on this one. Firstly, uh, is that better beer is made by better brewers, not by better equipment. Um, if you have skill and practice and time and you're taking notes and you're brewing deliberately, uh, you can actually make far better beer on basic equipment than somebody who's just kind of winging it and using really high-end equipment. Uh, but at the end of the day, what better equipment does is allow us to control our process better and also allows us to have a little bit more consistency and convenience sometimes. As long as you're taking advantage of those aspects of the improved equipment, then you're well on your way to making better beer as a result of it. But the second thought is where do you invest that money if you decide to actually upgrade your equipment? And I really honestly believe it should go into the cold side before it goes into the hot side. Uh, cold side being everything after the boil. So what that involves is fermentation, temperature control, aeration, oxygen protection after the fermentation is complete, packaging and serving. All of those things count as cold side. Plain and simple, if you have bad wort going into the cold side, you can still save that with a good fermentation and good process control. If you have great wort going into the cold side, and you don't have control over your fermentation, it will ruin the beer. If you invest in the cold side before the hot side, you're going to be able to control a lot more things about your beer and therefore really increase the consistency and the quality of the beer as a result. And if you wanna go ahead and continue to invest in the hobby and upgrade your hot side as well, then go for it by all means if that's what you want. But at the end of the day, if you only have a limited budget for what you're trying to upgrade, just stick with that cold side. The fourth piece of advice that I have is plan ahead, always. Brewing takes a lot of time. Um, if you're like me and you have a kid that's going to show up pretty soon, there may not be as much time for brewing as there used to be in the past. And, you know, you might have a busy job. You might not be uh, able to attend your fermentation as much or carve out some time to actually focus on brewing. There's a time investment in almost every single step of brewing. And I mean, it starts all the way back to choosing what kind of beer you want to make. If that's a seasonal beer, you're going to have to plan ahead for that. If it's for a special occasion, you're going to have to plan ahead so that you know that it's ready in time. Things like picking out the ingredients, building your recipe, determining where you're going to buy those ingredients from, that all takes time. The brew day itself is going to take between three and six hours, depending on how you brew. Um, and there's sometimes some uh, some cleaning time ahead of that. Um, sometimes you'll be prepping your ingredients beforehand. That's gonna take some time. You've gotta figure out how to manage your fermentation. That's going to take time. You're gonna need to take time to take a sample or do a dry hop um, or just otherwise manage the fermentation. And then you get a package. That takes time as well. Um, and if you're bottling, it's gonna take a ton of time. So there's just a lot of things in brewing that take your time away from you and you have to plan ahead to determine how you're going to fit those into your schedule. When's a free weekend to brew? When's a free weekend to package? And stuff like that. Brewing is much less fun when you don't have the time to really enjoy it and don't have the time to work on it and you're rushing all the way through everything. It's just more like a job at that point than it is a hobby. And we all should be having fun with this. That's very important. Uh, so planning ahead is just the best way to make sure that you can still have your life, your job, your family, all the things that are important to you that should arguably demand more time of yours than brewing does, uh, but still have that fun and have that brewing hobby and still enjoy it. And then the final piece of advice I have for you guys is if you're starting out, you're gonna make a bad beer every so often. No one has brewed a perfect beer every single time they've tried. And actually, 90% of us have brewed terrible beer for our first several beers. So it happens. Don't get discouraged is my big piece of advice here. Just keep brewing. You will get better. You have to build experience, and with experience comes knowledge, and with knowledge comes better beer. It's not an overnight thing either. It took me a long time to really get to where I was able to finally dial in my system and dial in how to build these recipes in a way that made them delicious. And it gave it, it took a ton of time for me to understand how to manage the individual variables of brewing and figuring out which things I needed to tweak, figuring out how different ingredients impacted different things. It, there's just a lot that goes on and it's intimidating at first, and by following established recipes, you'll get yourself in the ballpark, but you really have to build skill and you really have to build experience as a home brewer to really get the best possible uh, final product out of it. 
but really at the end of the day, don't be discouraged if it's not what you want. I still have bad batches every so often. I still have issues uh, in my brewing that cause problems for the actual beer every so often. I'm the kind of person that I don't think that there is such a thing as a perfect beer. There's always something to be improved on. There's always something to analyze and look into and tweak and maybe make a better version of it. Now, if you're not like me and running a YouTube channel and putting out tons of different kinds of beers all the time, I really would recommend actually just picking what kind of beer is your favorite beer to drink or brew and just brew it over and over and over again, changing a little bit at a time. This approach is going to cause you to really improve very fast at an incredibly fast rate. You're going to be able to get probably within two or three rebrews of the beer that you like, you're gonna be able to get it exactly where you want it. And then you can make it consistently. And that's like the magic of it. And also to keep yourself from being discouraged, find yourself some homebrew friends, get involved with the homebrew club, go to meetings and just have a good time with other people who value the same thing that you do. I mean, I cannot express to you the impact that community makes for this hobby. Um, and that is more than anything going to be what carries you through, I think, and keeps you from being discouraged. Enjoy the process, enjoy the hobby, build some passion for it, and don't give up. If you keep it this thing long enough, you're going to make phenomenal beer no matter where you are in the world, no matter what ingredients you're using or what equipment you're using. Once you get it all figured out, you're gonna be well on your way to making amazing stuff. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope it was useful to you. And if you're a more experienced brewer out there and you've got your own pieces of advice, please drop them down in the comments section because this is a community and we can all learn from more than just me on this channel. So if you got something to share, please do share it down in the comments. And also please like and subscribe if you haven't already because I put out a lot of content like this and if you like this video, chances are that you're gonna like other content on my channel just as much, if not more. Um, if you want to support the channel, please consider picking up a t-shirt or a sweatshirt or something. You'll find this design and many others in my merchandise store, which you can find in the description box. I also have a Patreon, uh, which is also down in the description box. And my Patreon supporters have made a huge impact for this channel, helping upgrade its production quality, helping me get stuff like uh, this new voiceover microphone that I've been using for the last couple videos. And uh, I think it's made a positive impact for folks. So thank you to my patrons for helping make all that happen. And if you want to support in other ways, I also have channel memberships and and there's also the super thanks button if you want to hit either of those things it really does help me out quite a bit and i also have an amazon store where you can find all of the brewing equipment that i recommend as well as my production equipment if you're curious about all that if you want to follow me on more than just youtube i'm also available on instagram and facebook as at the apartment brewer so check those links out for some more frequent content between and before videos and last but certainly not least if you're still here Thank you very much for watching all the way to the end of the video. I appreciate it. These things can get kind of long and I put a lot of work into them. So if you're still here at the end, thank you very much for being here and I will catch you in the next one. So until then, cheers.